One of the great things about this game is it's not just kill the opponent. Um, in the back of the book, it gives you several um, different scenarios and they're a mixture of killing the enemy. There's also movement type missions where you've got to try and get a message across the table. There's objective grab games. So it gives you quite a wide range of different games you can play. Not only that, you can then multiply it up by the fact that there is 12 different setups. So it's not just necessarily a deployment of 12 inches in facing the opponent across the long table edges. You can play all sorts of different deployments which then means you multiply that by all the different scenarios. It gives you a huge wealth of different games you can play with this rule set. Right, so let's get into the actual mechanics of a turn. A turn starts with a dice off of a die 10 to get initiative. Once you have initiative, you can decide whether to crack on or pass the initiative over to your opponent. Each unit gets to operate once in a turn, although they can get some extra actions. That's these little yellow things that if the commander asks them to do something extra. So let's go through each of these. Each unit gets to activate each turn by doing something. That's these ones here. This one is a movement one. So if you want your unit to move, you would place this token against the unit. That would allow them to move. For these guys, that's four inches. So say we added it to them, they'd be able to move four inches along the path here. This one here is a defensive one. So let's imagine my knights here are being shot at with crossbows, which is pretty devastating at close range. So they're going to close ranks. Imagine they were a bit more spread out. They go into a defensive formation by placing this on them. They cuddle up nice and tight and they're forming a shield wall or almost like a, a Roman tortoise by bringing the shields up over their heads. That one, makes their armor better, their armor safe better for that turn. This one here is a combat action. That could be shooting or attacking. So let's imagine my crossbowmen here are shooting. So I would place this on them to indicate that their action for this turn is to shoot. Some units have special abilities. So for instance, these guys here, regular spearmen, they've got something called brace. Uh, but it's, it's something that they have to spend an action to do. That means they're getting in nice and tight, getting their spears, what's called couched, ready to receive sort of a cavalry charge. That's an ability, so I would use this token to show that they're doing their special ability for this round. So that's your action tokens. We do have some other tokens here. These yellow ones are command tokens. The better your commander, the more they will have. Most units on their profile will show that they can just do one thing in a turn. They can be ordered to do extra things. So this commander is the best, he's got three. He has to use at least one on himself, so if he's gonna move or uh, attack, he's used one already, because that's his defense one, so he's spent that one, but he's got two left. What he can do is any unit within his command bubble, which is 12, because he's got a banner, he can ask that unit to do an extra thing by spending one of his order tokens. There is a role to see whether they do it or not, and the more experienced troops are more likely to do it. So you do a die 10 roll to see if they pass that order. If they do, they can do something else. So let's imagine he's going to give this unit here an, another order to move again. Maybe he wants them to run down these crossbowmen that are over there. So they've passed their test and they get to move again. But any time that you do two actions, you become weary. The same is true if you do a run action, which is your movement times two. Once you're weary, that lasts for the rest of the turn, 
and you place this black token on to indicate that fact. It does make their uh, skill levels not so good. They're on a minus one to do anything, whether that's attacking, defending, or even making a morale test. So that black token indicates that. The last two tokens are these, and these are morale outcome tokens. This first one here, the brown one, that indicates something called broken. When a unit takes a 25% cumulative through the game amount of casualties, then they become broken if they fail a morale test. So this unit over here, the archers, maybe they have just taken two casualties. That's 25%. And let's assume they've just failed their morale test as well. So they are now broken. To indicate it, this token, the brown one, shows that they are broken. The last of the tokens is this red one. That's to indicate something called shocked. Broken troops tend to run away. They're frightened. Shock troops are just totally stunned. They don't move, they're stuck there. And you take a shock test if you lose 50% of a unit. Or there are some weapons that do it at 25%. So lances, when, they, when you charge with lances, they can cause shock. Or crossbow, particularly against armor at close range, they can cause shock. So let's imagine these guys here, They've lost four. That's more than 50%. They failed their test, and so they become broken, which is this one here. So that's your tokens.